All righty. Now we're on our last piece of template anatomy, outputs. What do we want our template to output? Now, when used on its own, you know, all they do is just show up in the console. And this can be nice if you say you've launched an instance that you want to just grab the DNS from quickly or a load balancer uh, for the same thing. Or if you just want to be able to scan through all the properties once a stack is built to confirm everything is correct. But for the most part, they're used for cross stack references. And that's just a you know, confusing way, <laughs> I guess it's not too confusing, of just saying how you use resources from one template in another template. And the way you do that is by exporting a value from one template and then importing that value into another. And we're gonna see that here towards the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and just hop in and step through this in the code because it's a lot less confusing than it sounds. Um, so right here, I'm gonna just, remember this is one of those nine top level properties and I like putting outputs at the end since you know it really is the last thing that happens. And just like with resources, I'm gonna code out the base structure of every output here. So the first thing you'll do is give it a logical ID. So what do you wanna refer to it as and what do you want to show up in the console when it's output. And then the first property, very simple. What's the description? What is this thing? What is this thing? I'll even leave the typo in there. And then value, what value do you want exported? So what can this be? Well, this can be a ref to just the straight logical ID that we know will just get the resource name, or it can even be the function get attribute and we can get a specific attribute about the group. And that's generally what you're gonna be doing. And you might think, okay, great, it's exported, but it's not. If we stop here, all that this is going to do, <laughs> it's just gonna output it on the console and that'll be great, but it won't be usable. If you want to actually make this available for other templates, you have to use this other property, export. So with export, you, what are you going to do here? What you're going to do is just pass it a map with one property of name. And this is what you want it to be referred to as when it's imported. So just to show you a danger here with this, which you would not want to do, and we'll talk about it more, is you would not want to name it something like security group or like this. Because now <laughs> the problem with, with exports is that when you export a value, it is made available to every other stack that is in that, that's right there in the same account and region as you. But don't think about that. We'll wrap back around that. For now, let's go ahead and make our first output. And we're gonna make one that doesn't export. We're just gonna make it for our own convenience. We're gonna get the security group name. And the security group name, well, for the description, it's just the name of the security group. And then for the value, well, how do we get the name of the security group? We could go back to the docs, but hopefully you remember it because I just said it. It's just exactly what's passed if you do a reference. So we'll just reference the logical ID. And now what'll happen when we launch this template, security group name will be output to the, con the output section of our console and it'll show us the security group name. Okay, so that's good. But now let's do the security group ID because the security group name, I mean, that's nice to know, but we want some more information about it. So let's make another output. We'll call this security group ID, not a comma there. And for the description, well, same thing, ID of the security group. And then for value, well, for this time, we know that we can't just use a ref. How do we get that? Well, let's just do our flow here. What we would do is we would go to the resource property reference, pretend like this is the console. We would go into EC2, find the security group, and then we know that if we want to know how to grab values from our resources, we need to go to return values. And we can see if we want the group ID, we need to use function get attribute with group ID. And so function get attribute follows the format of function get at, and then we just pass it the logical ID and then the attribute we want. So in our case here, that's going to be security group. And then for this, it's going to be group ID. And again, I'm just getting the group ID from right here. 
And so with this done, when this evaluates now, when this output sections, we'll not only know the security group name, but we'll also know the ID of the security group. Now, what if you want to export the security group ID to be used? Because say that this is a security group that you have to use on all of your instances to meet some sort of requirement. Well, you would absolutely want this to be reused in other stacks that you've built. So this is actually a good case for reusing and exporting the value. What would you need to do? Well, just a spoiler alert here. <laughs> if it's for EC2 instances, they need the security group ID. So this is what we would want to export. So the way we would do this is we would add the export property. And in here, we would do name. Now, like I said, what you don't want to do is do this. If you do this, it will work. <laughs> you know, it'll work, but it won't. It, it's just it's just not a good way to go about, to go about doing this because then if someone else launches a reusable stack and they name it something extremely general like this, um, you know, it, you're, it just they're going to step on each other, and AWS is going to throw a fit. So the way you generally go about exporting values is you prefix them with something unique about your stack. And generally, that's just the stack name. You can use the stack ID, but the stack name, in my opinion, is generally a lot more readable. And you're not going to be able to name a launch a stack, you know, two stacks with the same name, anyways. So it's never going to be it's never going to be a problem. So how can we do that? Well, if you recall, in pseudo params, let me navigate to those docs. So that's the main page. Template reference pseudo parameters. There is a pseudo parameter called stack name. In stack name, whatever you name your stack when you launch it, this parameter will be made available to you. So how are we gonna use that in context of this string? Like how are we gonna combine that parameter with this name? Well, what we're gonna do is we're going to use another intrinsic function, specifically the function sub. And what function sub does is it substitutes variables in a string. So let's just, you know, there's all this stuff up here. You can do it with specific joins, but the easiest way is just the example that they have here. And if we go take a look at an example right here, you just see that you pass it a single string. And in a single string, by using dollar sign and two curly braces, you can reference pseudo parameters, normal parameters, or logical ID. So it's actually a really super useful function. So that's actually what we're going to do. Instead of having a straight string here, we're going to open up a, another function, function sub, and we are going to use that special pseudo parameter, stack name, security group ID. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. And so with this, now this value, when we launch this template, other templates can reference this stack and grab the security group ID to be used. Now we're not gonna go through right now and code a full thing to show it, but I do have an example demonstrating this. So over in this template called instance.json, and I'll collapse to get amount of it because I want you to just focus on this importing thing. So down here in resources, we have an EC2 instance and it has a bunch of properties, but specifically it has one called security group IDs. And this is just an array of security group IDs. Now, normally you would just pass these in as a string. So you would just do like one, two, three, four, whatever the ID of your thing is. But you know, we, we don't wanna do that. But instead we're using a special function called import value. Let's hop over to the docs here import value, let's open that up and take a look at it. And we can see that the format is really just, you know, export, here, here we go. All you need to do is just give the name of the particular parameter. So while, while we could hard code this in here, this doesn't have to be another nested function, right? This could just be, if we knew the stack name was uh, security stack, we could just put security stack, security group, ID, and this would work all the same. Or if we named this bananas when we launched it, then this would just be uh, bananas security group ID. I'm getting a little carried away here, but I just wanna make sure that I drive home that that's all that you would have to do. And now when you launch this stack, it would pull in, assuming you've launched a stack from this template called bananas, <laughs> it would pull in the security group ID from that stack and use it for this instance. 
However, the general way that you do this is you create another parameter. So param security stack name. And when someone launches this instance template, this parameter is going to ask him, say, hey, what is the name of an active CloudFormation stack that has the security group that you want to use with the instance? So just type it in. And so just like any other parameter, if you named your stack after uh, that launched from this template bananas, <laughs> well, then you would just put in bananas. And down here using sub again, we would sub out that parameter and then add security group ID and we'd be good to go. And so this is all that there is to exports and imports. You're going to export the value under outputs, and then in your other templates, you are going to import the value using import value. And if you want a little bit more reusability, you'll just make another parameter where you'll point to the stack that has the export that you want, and then just sub that in right there. And there we go. That is all for outputs. Not too bad. Like I said, they are mainly used for exporting. Um, but other than that, they're pretty straightforward.